Hey guys, so this is what if Deku was Ultimate Spider-Man Part 1. And this is a what if, I mean no, not part, part 2. What if Deku was Ultimate Spider-Man Part 2. Now, I hope you guys enjoy the video. And just get into it. After this video, I will be uploading um, two other what ifs for next week. Oh no, no, three other what ifs for next week. This is my what if starting the next week on Monday. Monday the Monday the 9th or 10th so yeah so let's just get into it guys let's just stop wasting time and just get right into it now last time I left off I left off on after the first day of UA and let's continue after that day now I'm still gonna be doing vigilante you know missions with Deku but basically I'm gonna be changing Deku's suits a little bit kind of like I did with my first what if Deku with my not my Spider-Man what if, but what if Deku had the powers of Spider-Man what if. The first one I made about Deku having, well, being, being like Spider-Man. Let's get into it. Now, basically, we see Peter, we see Deku on his way to school, basically walking in class 1A. The school, the school day goes similar to the same. And pretty much what happens is All Might still, you know, gets into the class or, like, you know, interrupts the class. And pretty much tells them about, well, combat training. He presses a button and out from the wall comes suits or pretty much hero suits or hero costumes. And pretty much All Might still says, you know, the clothes make the pros. Deku gets his co gets his hero costume and his, and his hero costume is different, a lot different because, you know, this is what a Deku was also inspiring and what if. Now basically, Deku's hero costume is very different from his vigilante suit. But that's gonna change because he is gonna modify his vigilante suit later on in the later on in the what if. But basically, we see that Peter, I mean Deku, well, Deku's real name is Peter in this universe. But basically, we see that Deku, basically, you know, just straight up gets ready and gets his hero costume on. His hero costume is like what you expect, a plain red and blue Spider-Man suit. Specifically, the Spider-Man suit from Amazing Spider-Man, the comic book, and the TV show. Or mainly the comic book series. So basically, his suit is uncannily exactly like the Ultimate Spider-Man suit with the same type of, with the same type of, well, what was it? Designs, web pattern, and web logo, and eyes. And basically, pretty much his eyes being a little bit more expressive, expressive. Kind of like the ultimate Spider-Man's eyes in the TV show. Now basically, pretty much, the spider, the spider suit is changed a little bit. The fabric is a lot more durable, so it can't be easily cut, scraped, or, you know, dirtied up. Kind of like how Spider-Man's suits normally are. His suit can withstand a lot of damage. Now, it can't protect himself, but the suit can protect itself without getting cut and stuff like that. So, direct, like, straight up getting stabbed or getting cut on the arm like a by a katana or a blade will keep it you know good in fashion no r scuffing or like being like being thrown across a building or anything like that would break the suit that much but the suit isn't like super durable it could still be burned shot through stabbed or anything like that but the suit's a little bit more better with wear and tear and slightly slightly fireproof so it can withstand a little bit kind of like a flamethrower, like a spark of a flame, but a full-on explosion can pos possibly scorch the suit. But basically, yeah. So his suit still has the still has a more modified version of his web shooter design. Basically, having the same web shooting web shooting design or pattern, or like well, the same web shooting design as Spider-Man has it. Basically, the web shooters having different type of properties, like being able to make web. Pretty much shields, clubs, um, parachutes, or just web constructs, and also being able to make web web balls, as in you know web punches or stuff like that. And also, it has a little bit of a gimmick. Basically, it's a small, very very small type of chip-like red thing that blends in with the suit's wrist on the web shooter, and he could pretty much take it out on the wrist of the suit. And throw it, and it only, and it can you can only you can only use it twice, and then you know Deku has to make another set of him, or it just has to refill. But he can only, but he can probably hold 
four, like two in each wrist. It's pretty much just a very, very compact web bomb. So it's just a web bomb. It's, it basically just shoots webs out of every direction. Pretty much just webbing the opponents or the enemies to the walls or pretty much disorientating them if they're, you know, able to counteract the webs. And basically, Deku's suit is just a plain, good, you know, classic Ultimate Spider-Man suit. Let's get into it. Now, basically, pretty much Deku walks into class and the class actually really likes his suit. Most people start to compliment him and especially Ochaku. Deku, you know, pretty much sees his suit as pretty good because, well, his suit is really emo and his suit is really more brighter and pretty much he designed his suit to be a little bit more brighter and a little bit more inviting so children and people all around the world will see him as a symbol of hope. Kind of like, oh my, see him as a hope itself. Like, if, well, pretty much, pretty much everybody would look up to him because he would have a more flashy more iconic type of suit design basically him, him having a pretty cool suit design now pretty much i was gonna make this deck his main suit but uh i just i just wanted to skip this one let's dive right into it now pretty much the combat training starts off and pretty much you know multiple girls in the class when i you know call him a suit saying that it's really cool and also it's very you know inviting very hero hero-esque blue and red very inviting colors of a hero basically Deku gets ready and Deku is teamed up with a chocolate like in canon and the episode starts off there now let's get let's get into it basically the the match starts off Deku going up against Ida and Bakugo the same and Deku tells Ochaku to you know just follow him and pretty much they start to sneak around the building trying to get to the bomb room before Bakugo can find them. Bakugo eventually comes across their path, and Deku tells Ochako to go up there and occupy Ida or try to get the bomb yourself, and I'll, I'll meet you up there. Basically, he gets into a fighting stance when Ochako runs off, and Bakugo gets into a fighting stance trying to, about to fight Deku. He tells Deku that you think I'm a bully? Well, you're, you're nothing, you don't know nothing, nerd. Basically, he throws an explosion towards Deku, and Deku dodges it with ease. Him shooting a web towards Bakugo, Bakugo's face, shutting him up, and Deku starts to run on the starts to run on the ceilings, basically run on the ceilings, you know, left and right, and on top of the very ceiling on the walls, and pretty much jumps right on Bakugo's chest and starts to pounce him down like a freaking like tiger, basically just trying to punch him down, just going full demon time like Toby did Gr Green Goblin, but not as bad, just you know throwing Bakugo onto walls and punching him basically pulling his punches because well Deku is, still has that Peter Parker and Deku mentality he's still a nice guy he just doesn't want to beat the ever living you know out of Deku out of Bakugo basically um if you don't know Deku was pulling his punches because well he has to pull his punches like he can't he doesn't really have that much control over his strength just yet but he has to pull his pull his punches in the most as po the most as possible because well if you do know spider-man um the whole type superior spider-man art so superior spider-man aka doc Ocky, peter parker's body punched scorpion upside the face or punched him in the head and punched his jaw clean off all clean off because well well because he wasn't pulling his punches and Doc Ock noticed that Peter could have killed him at any time because Peter had a lot of strength just, you know, depre just, you know, dormant. Or just he was pushing down deep into his body so he wouldn't, you know, kill anybody he fought. And also, if you don't know this, the Spire Sense is, well, dampened or pretty much Peter, well, purposely dampens or pretty much purposely halfway, like, like straight up, you know, loosens his spire sense because if his spire sense was all way turned up and he didn't and he didn't hold it back, his spire sense would go would be going off every day, and the really see it, Peter should not be getting hit at all because the spire sense allows him to dodge and perceive danger at superhuman levels of speed. So yeah, but basically back to the story. 
He said that Deku was fighting Bakugo, punching him, and kicking him through walls. Bakugo also fighting and hitting Deku because Deku's, you know, holding back, obviously, because he's Spider-Man. Or he's about to be Spider-Man later on in the future. And pretty much he starts to dodge Bakugo's, dodge Bakugo's attacks left and right. As he's jumping down, he shoots a web towards Bakugo's face and runs towards him, drop kicking him into the ground. He grabs Bakugo by the foot and slams him into the ground, throwing him through the ceiling, uh, throwing him through the ground into another, um, pretty much, into another floor beneath them, kind of like Green Goblin did to Tom. Uh, if you haven't seen Spider-Man's No Way Home, spoilers, sorry, I'm like really sorry. But, like, honestly, dude, if you haven't seen it, what are you doing? Like, bro, what are you doing? But, basically, Deku pretty much has to go ham on Bakugo, throwing him and kicking him through walls and starting to, you know, chuck him around like a rag doll. And Bakugo's all, also getting hits on Deku, basically throwing explosions, shooting, shooting grenades towards him, and eventually he gets close enough to pull his grenade arm in front of Deku's face. Pushing Deku through about 16 walls of the building, getting him across the other side of the building, knock, almost knocking him out. Deku gets up with his mask halfway ripped and his and the shoulder of his suit and the left peck of his suit basically completely scorched off. Pretty much, Deku gets up, him having that type of, you know, that Tobey Maguire Spider-Man that Tobey Maguire Spider-Man durability. Basically having that durability because Toby took a bomb, a Green Goblin bomb, the same bomb that can disintegrate a human being to bone to the face. So, yeah, he can withstand a little explosion from Bakugo. But it was like, like the bit is simple. The barrel of the, you know, grenade thing on Bakugo's arm was up against Deku's face. Not, a, not at it, up against it. Like skin to middle contact i mean right up against his skull right up against his forehead and got hit right up there bro basically deku was angry and he wasn't pulling back he didn't even notice he wasn't holding back he started to sprint full speed webbing and swinging towards the building on the other side of the building where bakugo was bakugo in the room pretty much you know double tagging or pretty much you know being a ochaku with ida ida throwing Running away with a bomb and Bakugo just cornering, corner, cornering Ochaku throwing explosion at her, throwing explosions at her. She still wasn't giving up and Bakugo was about to put tape on her, just you know, take her out. But Deku would web up there and pretty much tell tell him I'm not out, stupid. Basically webbing is webbing multiple webs up against Bakugo's face and pushing him toward or pulling him towards him and he Mortal Kombat. Like, straight up, get over here on Bakugo. Bakugo. He started to throw Bakugo around like a ragdoll, punching him left and right, and straight up just socking the man just nonstop. He would throw Bakugo around left and right into pillars again and again and again, not even noticing that he was throwing him more, dra more drastically and just throwing him nonstop, just completely, like, just breaking most of the bones, ribs, and just, like, pretty much nearly caving in Bakugo's ribs. He would throw Bakugo around and eventually was done with him when he threw Bakugo, uh, pretty much, and he threw Bakugo into a wall, knocking him out. He would have spread it towards Ida and punched him outside the head, holding back him before he was, you know, made contact. He, with his, you know, incredible like spider-man you know reaction time he would have been thinking and he would have slowed down his punch holding back because well ida was innocent he didn't really do anything to deku and didn't really fight back against ida that it didn't really fight back against ochaku that much so basically pretty much well ida you know just you know braced for impact and just got knocked out deku didn't punch him so hard to you know break his jaw off but you know, nonetheless Ida was out for the count. Basically, Deku would grab the bomb before it fell fell the ground because Ida still had it in his hand, and Deku pretty much won. Hero team wins and villain team loses, but Ida and Bakugo aren't even awake to hear it. So yeah, so pretty much, Bakugo goes to the hospital or goes to Recovery Girl. He gets some gets patched up. He need, he has a full body cast on his torso and on his wrist for a couple days. 
So basically, mm, ain't that badly injured. But yeah, so basically, pretty much Deku, Deku, you know, is scolded for being a little bit too brutal. But let, nonetheless, you know, Azawa just doesn't really want to deal with it. So he just, you know, goes with it. On the other hand, All Might isn't really that apologizing, but, you know, uh, plot armor. Deku doesn't really get, you know, in that much trouble. So yeah, so basically, after that, the students are sent back home. And I'm not going to leave it off here because, well, for the rest of these, rest of this what if, I'm going to be doing vigilante, you know, missions after this. So last time, I think I did an episode with Deku meeting of Kingpin at the docks or somebody else. But let's get into it. Let's move on to another type of Spider-Man story. Let's move on to Shocker, some street level villains that Spider-Man fights. Let's get into it. Let's start our story off. Or we start our secondary story in this what if. Basically, Deku doing his vigilante business at nighttime and him pitting on a new modified version of his suit. Basically, him wanting to be a little bit more of a friendly guy but not give his self away to UA. So he modifies his suit to look similar to his hero costume that he has from UA where he, you know, pretty much designed for UA to make. Basically, him having a hero costume or a, you know, vigilante suit similar to this. Kind of like the home... Kind of like the Spider-Man Homecoming suit or Homecoming made, Homemade suit. Basically, it being similar to this. Now, pretty much, it would have LEDs in the eyes to make it a little bit more menacing in the dark. But the LEDs would go out if Peter clicked his web shooters twice. So, yeah. His eye, the suit would be still functional or still be functioning as same as the Homecoming Homemade suit. Same thing. It will still be, you know, just a couple of sweat clothes mashed together. And the backpack would have just had spare web gadgets because Peter didn't want to hold that much web gadgets on his, you know, more heroic suit because it would make the suit a little bit too bulky and he wanted to show off his muscularity. So, yeah. So, basically, pretty much Peter had a backpack on blue or half a time didn't have a backpack on just used the pouches on inside of the sweat inside of the, you know, pretty much hoodie or the, you know, vest piece and basically high web, web gadgets there. The web gadgets are basically just more bulky versions of web grenades, basically just shells of normal grenades painted red with webbing canisters in them. That would basically be a little bit, basically just a lot more, you know, unpredictable. They would shoot one way, other way, or just go all around at way more deadlier speed. Basically, Peter using them as a last resort. He would also have some smoke bombs, some if the situation got a little bit too risky and he needed to dip. So, yeah. So, let's just get into the vigilante, yeah, the vigilante story. And basically, Deku goes out in the night, basically webbing around, and he eventually sees a robbery in progress. He webs down there and stops and tries to stop the car, pretty much from running off. And pretty much, he stops the car, but sees that there's no money in it. That is a diversion. Peter, because Deku's been a vigilante for a couple months. So, not like, a couple of people on the streets know him. So, pretty much, it was mainly a diversion for the heroes to follow. And pretty much, it was just, well, people that were hypnotized. Pretty much, he would have swept right back to the bank and would have seen that Shaka was about to leave the bank. He would have kicked Shaka back into the bank, him not knowing him, and Shaka would have threw an electrical pulse towards Deku. Deku would have dodged it, basically him being confused and having squinty eyes and pretty much looking towards him and saying, who are you? He says, I'm the Shocker. Get out of my way, kid. Basically, Shocker in this universe would be a cork person. Basically, Shocker would have a cork named Electrify. Basically, he can shoot electric shock waves through his forearms, but no other part of his body. So pretty much, he could shoot. He basically have. He basically has the same powers as Shocker with his technology, just for his arms. So basically, he just has the same power set as Shocker, but it's actually powers. So yeah, and the psychic or the people he's working with is a, another villain I'm just making up. That is probably going to be a more recurring villain in his vigilante part of the story. Um, my mind wiper or mind, just you know, just something mind 
or he, you know, he's called, he calls himself Mind Wiper, or Mind Controller, or just Mind, but mainly, mainly, most people on the streets call him, call him Mind, like Mind as in, you know, the, you know, on the street, or just Mind as, you know, your brain, but yeah, so basically, Mind has a power called, pretty much, control, basically, he can control a person's brain, or just hypnotize them for about five hours or four hours at max. Basically, pretty much he would have, you know, concert or pretty much controlled the people that were hostages in the bank to fight against Peter. Peter would have noticed this and would have seen it in their eyes that the people in the bank just had glowing yellow eyes and mine had a glowing yellow forehead that was glowing when he was controlling, you know, the, the hostages. So he started to web the hostages down to the ground and started to web no, I should have throw like a, I mean like a suffocation level of webbing towards mine's forehead or towards his whole head, basically making it impossible for mine to get any air or oxygen. Peter would have noticed, Deku would have noticed this, and pretty much just would have kicked the kicked the absolute doo doo water out of Shocker's forehead. Shocker would have still been you know conscious, so he would just flee off with as much as much money as he can carry, about two bags of five k. Basically, he would have ran towards, you know, pretty much mine and would have cut him a slip for him to breathe and would have knocked him out there. Basically, he would have ran off and webbed around, webbed away from the bank, basically letting the heroes and the cops show up to arrest mine and pretty much, you know, get medical attention for the hostages. Now, after that, pretty much, pretty much most people in, in well, most people in Japan would have seen Deku as more of a better vigilante. He would still go by his norm, his past vigilante name, the Spider, and pretty much, you know, with his suit being a little bit more like, his suit being a little bit more like his, well, real hero costume suit, Azawa and the rest of the heroes, and also the rest of the heroes that worked the UA, didn't put it together because his suit was a little bit more janky than the actual superhero suit he had. And it didn't have any webbing patterns, and it just had a more techy version of his spider symbol. So yeah, so basically, yeah, and his spider symbol was like a lighter type, darker blue. So it was more you had to really, you know, he had to be in like direct light or sunlight for you to see or define his spider logo. So basically, pretty much he was a vigil. He did a little vigilante hunting after the shocker business. He would have webbed around the rest of the. Pretty much what was it? City eventually coming across something at the docks. He would have looked at it and pretty much would have seen something at the docks happening. He would see a man that would be walking around, basically the man getting snatched into the shadows. Peter Deku would have been confused and would have done a little bit more investigating, he would have been looking around. He would have gone to the alleyway and he would have started to get attacked by something. He would have thrown it into the light, the moonlight, and it would be shown to be Morbius. Morbius would have started to scratch and growl towards Deku, and Deku would have started to dodge most of his attacks. He would have told him to stop now, and pretty much Morbius would have looked at him saying, you don't know how it's like to stop, I can't, boy. Basically, him grabbing Deku by the neck, choking him out, saying, I'm sorry. And he would have started to try to feast on Deku. Deku would have punched him upside the jaw, no! and he would have kicked him off of him. Basically, him getting back up, he would have webbed Morbius to a crate or a nearby, pretty much, container ship, at the docks and basically started to interrogate Morbius saying, Who are you? What are you? Why are you why did you hurt that man? He would start to look around and he would see the man dead, like straight up prune pruny, like suck dry body dead in the alleyway. He would have looked back and see that Morbius would have vanished with the webbing being cut loose and him basically you know, vanishing. Deku would have started to be confused and would have tried to look more into this. He would have seen, he would have looked at his phone and would have looked up sightings on a nearby building and basically would have seen that it was more sightings of more like vicious type of weird well attacks. And Morbius in this canon would be have the same type of well origin story. Basically him, you know, still experimenting on himself because of his blood virus and him being a quirkless person in this universe. So he wouldn't have you know, a quirk, he would just be the same Morbius and get the same origin story and be a scientist that was trying to find a cure for his disease. After that, we see that Deku later on, about like an hour later into the night, basically he would have been swinging around trying to find Morbius 
then pretty much Morbius would have, you know, covered his tracks pretty quickly and Peter couldn't find him, or Deku couldn't find him. Basically, well, basically Shocker, Morbius, and I think Kingpin have already been set for Peter to go up against. So in part, in part three, Peter will mainly be dealing with Morbius, Shocker, or mainly Morbius for one whole Vigilante episode, but yeah. So basically, after that, he said that Deku would have, would have been swinging back to his house when he would see a robbery going on. He would stop the robbery pretty quickly and would have seen that one of the, you know, people there, one of the last, you know, robbers that came out the bank at the last minute would have been stopped by Peter. And Peter would have, you know, threw a quippy quote or a quippy joke at him. Basically, first time him using a quippy joke in his vigilante suit or, you know, normally and him kind of liking it and pretty much it throwing off throwing the villain's perspective off and him noticing this him get, taking a liking to this more better approach because that's the reason why peter makes quippy jokes to throw his opponents off now basically we see that he would look at peter and would have smiled or chuckled and basically would have shoot a huge wave of sand towards deku deku would have been pushed against the cr- push against the other side of the alleyway where the robber would have escaped out of the bank. Peter would have gone back up, or Deku, Spider-Man would have gone back up, or the spider, or Deku would have gone back up and started to web after this sand creature or this quirk user. Now, in this universe, this Sandman, this version of Sandman, would have had a quirk, but it would be a dormant quirk. All up until his, all up until this version of Sandman's daughter got cancer, he felt so much guilt that he couldn't afford and he was already and he was in jail that he couldn't afford and he was in jail and he couldn't even be there with his daughter so pretty much he had like a year left and then he got out of the jail and after he got out of the jail he was seeing that his condition his daughter's condition got even worse he was full of so much guilt that his quirk activated after all these years and he was about in his 20s or 30s and his quirk finally activated him having the same power set as sandman and basically with the same limitations, the same power set, and the same power level as canon comic book Sandman. Basically, Sandman would have been running off and basically would have tried to get away from, well, Deku. Deku would have been webbing after him vigorously, him spinning out sand from his mask, saying, sand, man, sand gets everywhere, man. Why try to do that? Basically, him yelling at Sandman to, you know, stop and, you know, just talk this out. Sandman would have looked at Deku and would have said, enough of this. And he would have been getting close enough to Dekio Beach and he would have ran across Dekio Beach, summoning or controlling most of the sand there. Basically, well, shoving or like making a whole sand tsunami, like a whole sand, like a whole like sand tornado, short chase straight towards Deku, going straight down a pretty much straight down the building's street. Basically making a huge sand wave, making all the buildings there and all the cars there break, being filled with sand and a whole, like, five feet of sand covering the street. Basically, Peter Peter would have dicked himself out of the sand because he was laying flat on the ground and would have took his mask off, spitting out sand. He would have put his mask back on and basically he would have webbed off. He would have webbed off, basically, Sandman would have ran towards Deku. I mean, was would have ran away from Deku, basically Deku webbing off, trying to figure out where he went, but for that night, he would have just given up. He would have webbed off, and pretty much that would be the end, or that would be the end of the episode. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video, hope you guys like and subscribe, and part two will be more about Morbius and Sandman, maybe Kingpin, and yeah guys. And go in the comments and suggest any more Spider-Man villains I should introduce in episode or in part three. See you guys later. Bye. And as always, guys, have a blessed day.